Digital. We're from uh, London, UK, and we're here to talk to you about a little project we did um, end of last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, towards the end of last year. Um, it was actually our first experience of K2, and uh, it was, uh, I think, a great success. I know the clients are happy, and it's led to great things. And we really felt this was an opportunity just to um, present uh, a little piece that was perhaps a little bit less about coding, a little less technical, a little more fluffy, a little bit more uh, human. Uh, the human story here was uh, essentially how to deal with, uh, with uh, journalists. Journalists who are, um, I think fair to say, reasonably technophobic. They uh, have a very tried and tested and traditional way of doing things. You know what I mean, don't you, Tony? It's true. Um, yes, says Tony. <laughs> um, essentially, uh, they came to us uh, looking for a way to continue an, an arts desk presence on the internet when, in actual fact, uh, a lot of the arts desks are, are disappearing. A lot of the big newspapers are stripping right back uh, their personnel. Um, I believe I'm right in saying The Guardian now is down to just five people on their arts desk covering nationwide arts coverage. And, uh, and, th and this group of around about 40 journalists felt it was time to, to uh, address the problem. And they came to us essentially as a, a direct recommendation from another client of ours, the English National Ballet, who you can see here. Um, we've been doing the English National Ballet website uh, for, for many years now. Um, and they've been on uh, a Joomla platform for a good portion of that time. Um, they, uh, they've had a couple of updates in the meantime. Our relationship with them is very good, and we're very happy that they chose to recommend Arts Desk so enthusiastically, uh, recommend us, I should say, to the Arts Desk so enthusiastically. So they had uh, pretty much made the emotional decision to go with us when they first met us. Um, they had done an inordinate amount of research, these journalists. Uh, essentially, we're talking about 40 journalists. There was a core team of around about seven or eight of them who had put together their business model. And they had done, as I said, an enormous amount of research. They'd looked at uh, quite literally hundreds of websites. They had very, very clear ideas of how they wanted the site to look and how they wanted the site to work. Their expectations, I would say, far exceeded their budget. Um, when that happens, we take a reasonably hard line at 3B. Uh, we, we can't get too involved. Uh, with, with clients who simply don't have the budget to meet their expectations. It just causes all sorts of problems further down the line. In this instance, I think it's fair to say Jack and I kind of got them straight away. We got what they were trying to do, we appreciated, we thought it was a good idea and we thought we could help them. So we took a bit of a view on it as far as the budget's concerned. Uh, they had a very long list of requirements, things that they knew they really, really wanted. Uh, multiple authors, authors' bios, blogs, comments, all that sort of thing. They even wanted some flash games and we managed to talk them out of that one. Uh, they wanted social network integration, and they particularly needed extensive tagging. And uh, this is where we began to scratch our heads a little bit. Um, we could address some of their issues with just loading hundreds and hundreds of components, um, but that really wasn't gonna work for us. We'd heard about and we're looking for an excuse to use, uh, looking for an excuse to use K2. Um, has anybody else here actually built a K2 site? Is anybody familiar with putting them together? Yeah, they're fun. They are fun. This is not, as I was explaining to you just now, a how-to put a K2 session together. This is just a bit of a fluff and a bit of fun. Okay, this was our first venture with K2. Uh, we were very excited, but it was scary because we don't like to use new tools on a production site. Um, and especially when the budget is tight. We're happy to use a new tool if, there's, if the budget allows, but invariably it doesn't, so we're a little bit nervous. Um, there wasn't even enough in the budget really to scope out a, a technical document ahead of time. Uh, we just really had to jump in with both feet and see what happened. Uh, as I said, these journalists had a big idea, an idea we liked a lot, but no money. Uh, they liked the, the, the notion of open source, obviously, for budgetary reasons but they are a collaboration of journalists at es you know, Essence anyway. So they really like the idea of being part of uh, this open source community, at least nominally part of the open source community. So they, they definitely bought into that. They did, however, let slip a few months later, actually at their Christmas party, 
they let sleep, slip during a speech during which they thanked us for our efforts that the next cheapest bid for their business was about £53,000 more expensive than we'd been. And at that point, I spilt most of my beer and pretty much fell off my stool. Um, and one of the reasons that Jack and I really wanted to make this presentation to the community today was really to say thank you as much as anything. Uh, to say thank you to the Joomla community and to FOTUS and the team at Joomla Works because, quite frankly, we couldn't have done it. We simply couldn't have done it without them, and the Arts Desk would simply not exist. Um, right, let's have a little look at the site, and uh, Jack, perhaps you'd like to take over. So, um, hello. It's working. That's better. Um, so we've got the, the Arts Desk site up on the screen here for you. Um, some of you may have seen it before. Uh, for some of you, it will be new. Um, as Alex mentioned, we've got a team of 40 journalists publishing content to the website. Uh, you check one hour to the next, you'll see different content on there. There's tons and tons of content going on every day. Um, it's already up, I think, into the region of a couple of thousand articles on the site. Um, those journalists are organized into teams. Um, we've got a team pretty much for every tag, which you'll see along the top, just below the logo there. Those are the various art forms. Uh, each of these tags has a team, as I say, that's called a hub, and there are various deskers, which are the other journalists that sort of that, that provide all the content um, for that hub and, and for that tag. Um, the journalists use K2 front-end login, so apart from two who have back-end access, all the others are adding content through the front-end. The two that have admin access are doing moderation of comments and uh, modifying modules and this kind of thing. One thing you may not be aware of, with K2, you can actually allow people to moderate comments purely on their own articles when they log in. So for the journalists that don't have the back-end access, it's phenomenal, uh, allowing them to see, once they've logged in, complete control over all of their content. Uh, the client was very specific in this instance about the design and the usability. So while we had a lot of influence over design, it was dictated to us really which elements needed to be there um, and sort of where they had to be. And then we had to, to fit that into an attractive design idea. Um, now, K2, we've discovered that it's ideal if you can run it out of the box in terms of features and functionality. And then obviously, just like we do with, with all other Joomla components, um, you then extend it. Extend that functionality, building your own plugins, uh, using template overrides and this kind of thing. Um, the artists don't actually know this, although I think a few of them might be watching live on the internet right now. Uh, we actually built the website twice. Uh, the first of all, because it was our first go at K2, we decided to just hack it to bits, break all the Joomla rules and hack the core jump in there and see how it works, see what it did. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun seeing how they, how they coded it and what it could do. So once we'd hacked it to bits and got the site working the way that we needed it, um, this coincided with the Joomla Works team releasing a new version. And of course, we knew that we were going to run into trouble updating it. So it gave us the chance to just start again with what we'd learned and what we knew about how it was working. And uh, so yeah, we built the site twice. Uh, second time around, much faster um, and didn't actually delay things too much. Now, what you can see here is an actual content item. Um, you'll see that the, uh, the background has changed, and we've got adverts on the right-hand side. We've got adverts at the top. The logo has even changed color as well. Everything is color-coordinated through the site, so all of the tags have their own color coordination. Um, now, one of the things that we've learned with this client, probably more than any other uh, that I've worked with in the last five years working with, with Alex and that he's worked with over the last 13 years that 3B Web's been running, uh, is the issue of trust, and not in a negative way, but just that if you can achieve complete trust from the client, then, um, then you're ahead of the game. And to start with, you know, we, ha we had to earn that trust. Um, so everything that they asked us to implement, we had to go off and investigate, can it be done? And because we were using new tools, we hadn't used K2 before, we, there was a lot of time spent investigating that, which now, of course, we can put into practice in other sites. Now, they were dictating certain layout constraints to us. Um, as Alex mentioned, they looked through tons and tons of sites to work out the way that they wanted everything to work. And there were issues with menu highlighting. Uh, the, the two menus along the top 
are showing tags on the black menu, and then on the gray menu, we've got the various categories. Um, color coding the tags was important to them, but this is a brand new request. It came in right at the end when we were ready to launch. Oh, can you just color code the entire site, change the logos, change the background, change the tag colors, do the whole thing? And we looked at it and thought, hmm, okay, interesting, that's gonna be tricky, and you're telling us last minute, but we decided it was a really good idea and can actually help with the usability of the site. So with as nice an idea as that, we just thought, let's do it, let's try and do it. So. Um, we managed to, and we'll perhaps talk about that a little later on. Um, the journalists knew what they wanted, of course, and, 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 and were telling us what they wanted, but without their own inherent knowledge of website development, of Joomla, of K2, um, we would have to translate those requirements into, into what we could actually deliver them. Um, one of the things that was actually really quite simple, um, but they fell in love with um, when they saw it, was what we, what we call the, the fireplace which is the background surround around the site. Um, it is ostensibly a, a simple thing. They initially wanted it to be um, a color associated with the tag. And we pushed for um, offering them different backgrounds. And so we just did this, implemented it, showed it to them, and they fell in love with it. So as you browse the site, the various tags that, that apply to the, to the content items will, as we've talked about, change the colors of the logos and things, but also change the background. So when you're in a comedy, tag, you'll see a comedy background. When you're in uh, theatre, you'll see a theatrical background. Um, nowadays, of course, we would hope that we have earned their trust, uh, complete trust, and they let us um, improve the site in, in ways that we think is appropriate. Um, and we made a couple of changes this morning, which we've had some feedback on, should we say. Um, if I jump to the next page, you can see here a, a tag layout. So this is the comedy page that I just mentioned, and you can see on the left-hand side uh, a red background with a, with a microphone. You can see that the layout in the middle has actually changed, and we've got the consistency on the right-hand side with an inside comedy um, module showing some of the other uh, ways to navigate that, that particular tag. Tagging, as I say, it became key on the site. Um, for those of you that haven't built a K2 site, an item can exist in one category and one category only, but you can have nested categories. Um, but you can apply multiple tags to your content, which they, of course, fell in love with and started really going to town with, uh, with regards to the tags. Um, as I mentioned, um, the tag that is applied needs to identify the page, or the page needs to be identified by the tag, and that needs to change the backgrounds and logo color and everything else. Now, at the moment, we're even working on a plugin, probably for SH404 SEF, that some of you will either love or loathe. Um, and the way that we want it to work is theartsdesk.com forward slash the first tag, i.e. the top tag that's applied to the article, forward slash, and then the name of the article, .html but not to a particular category, which is the buzz category, the news category. Um, so this is going to prove interesting, and we're looking forward to having a play with that. We haven't yet built a plug-in for SH404 SEF. I was talking with Fotis last night about it, and it uh, could prove to be interesting. It, it does actually work with K2 out of the box now, but the way that we need it to work for this client uh, is getting, I think, a little complicated. Um, so as I say, the tag, the number of tags grew and grew and grew, and we ended up, before we knew it, with over 1,200 tags being applied to probably as many articles. Um, and I was, so I was talking to them about this because the site began to slow down. And if you've got a tag that is a particular person or a particular topic, there, there may not be any other items within the website that that tag can apply to. So using it as a navigational tool, it sort of falls down if you've only got one article that it applies to. So we decided to strip down the number of tags to make it more usable for the visitors. Um, we decided to limit the number of tags, as I say, and ordering them in the administration interface so that the main tags, these ones that are along the top in the black menu, are shown at the top. So we, we built with, um, with the K2 plugin API, we built some, some things to order the tags. Um, to, to put those ones at the top. Another thing we restricted was so that only administrators could add tags. Originally, the all 40 plus journalists were adding tags as they needed to go, and the list just grew and grew and grew. We actually got to a point where loading up the page would take 18 seconds just for it to run the query to find out which tags applied to the page and everything else. So we ended up optimizing that and got it down to under a second. Um, and then at the same time, playing with caching and everything else. 
If I jump to uh, another page within the site, you can see here another, another layout. This is a category, a category of reviews. So as I say, uh, the gray menu shows buzz, which is news, reviews, features, questions and answers, which are interviews. And an item can only exist in one of those. You'll see, obviously, that the layout of the items has changed completely. Uh, this is all ideas that come up with by them, the way that they wanted the content to be presented. The great thing with K2 that I fell in love with is that you can upload one, it uh, one image for your item. It automatically deals with the width of the images, making five different sizes as you've dictated, and then you can choose where and when those show up in their various sizes. I'm now just going to pass back to Alex, who can just talk us through this page here. Right. Well, one of the one of the one of the nice things, one of the one of the great things that we uh, get to experience with all of our clients at some point or another, to one degree or another, is is, is that we've it, we've become de facto business consultants over the years. We've we've done this sort of thing with so many clients, so many startups, or so many businesses who are trying to grow that we're able to sit with them and actually talk to them about their aspirations and their ambitions and where they want to be, but right from a grassroots level and say, well, how, how are you handling your email? How are you handling your calendar system? How are you handling your documents? This was essentially, as I said, a group of 40 journalists who were running a remote office. They very rarely got together physically. So they needed an email system, they needed a calendar system they could run remotely, and the obvious solution is going to be Google Apps. And it's frankly, it's a solution that we give to pretty much all our clients, would be fair to say, wouldn't it? Um, and in this instance, we were able to very easily, as you know, drop in a Google Calendar straight into the, into the site. It's a Google Calendar, I believe, that's fed by a number of other calendars that relate to the tags, is that? So you can see that they're color-coded, again, according to the tags along the top menu. How do they do that? I don't even know how they do that, but it's ever so clever. Please do. Um, they essentially, within Google Apps, they have multiple calendars. So you set up an account, you get one calendar each, but you can have shared accounts. So uh, shared calendars, I should say. So each art form it corresponds to a tag, and each of those has its own calendar within Google Apps, and those are then made public. What they do is all 40 journalists um, report to their hub, their, their main person, and that person adds content in to the various calendars. So when there's a new item, a new event coming up, they add it into the calendar and it automatically displays on the site. One of the ways that I know this works particularly well for these journalists is, is simply in divvying up what's going to get covered. So if there's, a, if there's a terrific concert coming up, somebody who's in charge, that, that hub master, if you like, is going to put it onto the main calendar and, and people can stick their hand up and say, well, that's something I'd quite like to cover. I'd quite like to write a piece on that. And then it can be allocated accordingly. So. You can, you can see that we're beginning to develop a relationship with these characters. Uh, they were tremendously enthusiastic. The volume of traffic going onto the site was unprecedented. Um, and they're very highly skilled. This is a, it's, it's premier content. It's, it's extremely well read and well received. There are, however, inevitably a number of the 40 who still struggle a little bit with the technology. Most don't. Uh, it, it's fair to say that when we delivered the site, we gave one tuition session to around about 13, 14 of them in our offices here in London, and they went out and taught everybody else. And we haven't had a phone call or an inquiry since. They just got on with it. There were a few people straggling, and this is a recent tuition session that we facilitated at our office, and, uh, and, they, and they taught themselves. We weren't involved. We just said, come on up, use the big screen, help yourself. And, and the lady on the left is the, is the main instigator. Her name is Mamie Brown. She's, uh, she's the sort of de facto president, I suppose, if you like, of the, of, of, the, of the group. And here she is just going over a few last details with a few people who were, who were struggling a bit. But again, since then, we've not had a single uh, support inquiry. They're just getting on with it. And I believe I'm right in saying that uh, their policy now is if anybody's going to continue to struggle, and we're talking about things like re resizing images. We're talking about really, really just the, the basics, getting the, getting the links right and that sort of thing then uh, they'll probably be politely asked to, um, to leave the collective. Uh, Jack, are you going to talk a little bit about the affiliate links, by the way? Is that something you want to uh, cover now? Yeah, I'll just yeah. Touch on that. 
Um, the affiliate links uh, that Alex has mentioned, obviously this uh, was a speculative venture. Uh, the, a few of the members of the, the journalists were, were actually putting in some of their own money, investing in the, in the site and its development, but it needed to make money as soon as possible. We needed to monetize it. So um, we'd like in the future, as I say, to, to monetize the fireplaces, the backgrounds. Um, and you've seen already on the site some, uh, some banner adverts. But another thing that we found was, because they're talking about um, arts and culture, we've got books, CDs, uh, films being reviewed, all of those things uh, you can monetize with affiliate links, so links to Amazon and everything else. Um, they started off with setting up their own affiliate links, uh, their own aff affiliate accounts for a few of the main uh, things that they would want to use, Ticketmaster, C-Tickets, Amazon, etc. And then we came across a great service that I don't know if the rest of you have found, it's called skimlinks.com. Um, that allows you to just put a bit of a snippet of JavaScript in the bottom of the website and any link to over, I think it's 7,200 merchants. If you put a link to, for example, Amazon or eBay or Ticketmaster, just put the regular link in. You don't need to tag it with an affiliate link or anything else and their JavaScript automatically adds their affiliate tag. They then collect any revenue and obviously it works with cookies so you can make revenue often for anything up to a month after that link uh, has sent someone to, to this paying site. Um, and they skim about 10 to 15% of the collection that they take. So whatever affiliate revenue they get, they'll keep 10 to 15% and give you the rest. So it meant that suddenly they didn't have this, for, I suppose, technological barrier that they had to go and find the link, add the affiliate link, and then use a, a URL shortener and then put it in the website. Suddenly we just say to them, just make regular links, and if there is an affiliate kickback, then it'll work automatically. So we found that to be absolutely brilliant. Um, if we jump on to the next slide, what the press had to say about the pirate ship. So we're now at the point of, uh, of actually launching the site. We've, we've given them their training and they start putting content in. It's exciting and you get to that day when you can actually launch the site. Um, luckily, the, uh, the client was immediately sort of overwhelmed, delighted with the site. And uh, it was apparent that we had earned their trust. Um, the site now receives a couple of thousand visitors a day, predominantly within the UK, about 75% um, and about 10 or 11% from the USA. 62% uh, I found are coming in from the search engines um, and of course it's, it's always fascinating to see which reviews are trending each week. There'll usually be one article that is just far and away more popular than, than any of the others. It's always interesting to see which ones those are. Um, obviously this is a site uh, made by journalists um, so other journalists opinions are going to be important so uh, they were very keen to see what other people would say within, in the press and how it would be received by them. So I'll just pass over to Alex who can talk you through a couple of uh, examples. Well, the, uh, the reception was, um, was extraordinary. Um, we were overwhelmed, overwhelmed, as were the journalists themselves. Um, it was, as, as I said, it was our first stab at K2. Uh, we knew it was only the beginning of our relationship with K2. I don't think that we could pretend it was the perfect K2 site, but we'd been on a steep learning curve, and I think we were probably um, expecting some criticism. I think we were probably expecting the journalists to look at this thing and say, well, it's not as good as the Guardian Arts Desk, or it's not as good as the Times. And um, without, I, I, I can't go into exactly what the Arts Desk paid for their site, but we're talking about uh, different differences in budget of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds and here we suddenly found ourselves punching with the big boys and I say we because at this point uh, by this point in our relationship with Arts Desk uh, Jack and I and our staff back at 3B felt very much involved and so we were as excited as they were when the, when, when the, uh, when the reception was as good as it was um, very quickly BBC Radio 5 nominated it alongside Google Street Maps and Spotify as one of the top five essential sites of 2009. We pretty much fell off our chair when we saw that. Um, and the, so the reception went on. Some more examples here. There's the, the Radio 5 mentioned there down at the bottom left. Um, We've got here that the Telegraph Online voted the Arts Desk as number four in their selection of the best culture websites. Um, it just went on and on, and it's not down to, to our work and, and the, the workings of the website. I would say it's down to their editorial content for obvious reasons, but it's been a, a really fun experience being part of something 
that has just exploded in, in this way, probably more than any other site that we've built. So it's been really exciting to see the, the constant feedback and being able to respond to that and adapt the site and improve things. I think it's fair to say, however, that what we were most pleased by, what we were most excited by, was that very shortly after its launch, dear old Fotis received it so well. Uh, the biggest accolade for us at 3B was to be featured in the Joomla Works blog as a great example of site usage. And uh, the site gets an enormous proportion, our site, I should say, 3B site gets an enormous uh, proportion of its visitors as a direct result of the reception that the Arts Desk has had. And we're aware that the Arts Desk, Arts Desk is, is successful in no small part to uh, the Joomla platform and the K2 plugin. So, uh, where next for the Arts Desk? Um, this is just showing a, a, a gallery layout, by the way. K2 deals very well with, uh, with galleries of images as well. Um, they are a humble bunch these journalists, and there's a lot of fun you can have with the user profiles in K2, and Fotis of, uh, about an hour or so ago was showing us how there's now um, a user extended fields plugin for K2 that allows you to um, add lots of extra fields to do with the actual authors on the website, so you can show their social profiles, you can show whatever you want with regards to their email address, phone numbers, etc., and provide their contact details. They haven't been keen to do that yet. They, there are some contact details on there. I personally think that we should add photographs, full bios, uh, examples of other work, all of their social media profiles, and actually push the journalists as the, the people behind the content and allow them to build their own sort of personal brand, as people call it. Um, we've also got some plans with regards to the podcasts. There's a chap uh, involved in the Arts Desk called Ed Sekerson. Um, he provides podcasts on the site, and we do a weekly CD roundup, reviewing all the best CDs, um, or perhaps some of the worst CDs, that have been released that week. We'd like to, uh, to push the podcast more. Um, we'll be using Podbean, I think, to, to provide those and syndicating that, those out through iTunes. And, and really, I think then it could explode with regards to, uh, to take up of the audio side of things. I'd also like to put on there um, a persistent music player so that people can, while they're browsing the site, if they want to, obviously not forced to, they can listen to music, listen to the podcast, and keep it persistent so when they change to another page, it doesn't stop the music, it just keeps playing. So that's, that's one, of, one of the plans I like to push for. Another thing with regards to monetization, uh, you can see the Carmen ad on the right and we've got a Barbican ad at the top there. We also use Google uh, AdSense through the site. Uh, we're keen to move it to Google Ad Manager for those, which is now, uh, some of you may be aware, it's now been renamed as DoubleClick for Publishers. Um, there's a, a, a plugin from JoomWorks which is for the Google Ad Manager, so I'm keen to find out if that works now that it's the, uh, the double click for publishers tool. Um, that will give us a lot more control over the adverts where they show through the site and everything else. Um, I don't know if any of you use any JavaScript toolbars on your site. Um, I found one that I like called Wibia, and we use that on quite a few sites. It goes along the bottom of the site, very easy to add. Uh, just a snippet of JavaScript. You can then, if you want, let the client just log into Wibia and control which tools appear on that. I put that on a few days ago, and bam, suddenly I had 25 emails come through from the journalists. It wasn't working, wasn't letting them, letting them log in. Tried various things to switch it off uh, at various times through the login process, and, and once you're logged in, but they were still having issues with that. So we switched that off, and we'll be playing with that on our development server. Uh, didn't expect that to cause quite, quite so much trouble. Uh, we played with regards to that, we played with the advanced module manager for no number and, and a few other ways to try and get that working. But given the, the heat of it being a Friday when a lot of their content goes out, we had to just rip it off the site and maybe you'll see that appear later. Um, and I'm keen to optimize some parts of the website. Um, I'd like, for example, on the comments, I'd like to point out to uh, their, their, their readers that if they want an avatar to appear, they need to go register at gravatar.com and then the avatar will be dynamically pulled in. Uh, what you'll find on this site is 99% of the comments have got a little generic avatar next to them. I don't want to switch the avatars off because I think they're going to be great once they, they do start registering with Gravatar and, and, and their image comes up. So I'd like to possibly put some, some words in above the comments field to just remind people to go and set that up. And if we jump on to another, uh, an example of another K2 site that we've built, I'll just pass over to Alex. 
Yeah, so what next uh, for 3B and K2? Um, it must, uh, I imagine it's obvious by now that we're huge fans of the K2 um, functionality. We find ourselves now um, looking for opportunities to uh, use K2 very early on in the pitch process. We're looking for a reason, an excuse to use K2 almost as soon as we've met a new client. Um, not least because it's not much fun to implement it uh, later in the day, and Jack's going to touch on that in just a minute. Um, but it suffice to say that on our new site, our 3B new site design that we're doing right now, we're moving from managing our, our online portfolio from Mazette's tree to K2. We think it could be an ideal way to show our portfolio of work. Um, and we just love using it. Um, this is the website that we've launched very recently. In fact, it's the, it's the website for a political party, the Conservative Party in Wandsworth, and it was launched uh, just before the general election that's just happened in the UK. Um, so it was a bit last minute. They came to us cap in hand, desperately needing a website. Um, we were able to deliver a fairly comprehensive solution in a fairly short order. Um, and immediately, it was obvious to us, they wanted to run this thing with a bit of a sort of news portal. K2 was the way to go. Jack, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? What you can see here is what we've called the news map. Um, I haven't yet seen a website where you can browse news and content by geographic location. And they'd started putting the content into the website. We were using K2, categorizing appropriately and tagging and everything else. And it seemed to me that as we've got uh, a location specified, we're in Wandsworth, it's an area in southwest London, all of the news is going to be local to one area. So we can show that news on a map somehow. So we decided that the ideal way to do this was to allow authors, when they're adding content to the website, to actually geolocate their particular content item on a map. So we added this as, as a plugin within K2. They simply click onto the map part when they're editing an item or, or adding an item and put, pop in an address, a postcode, or drag the pointer on the map. And that stores in the database then the location of this article. So what you can see here is the news map. All of the green trees show various articles that are on the website. Click on one of those, it pops up with a preview. Um, again, we can see the image here, which is one of the smaller images that K2 created for us automatically. It's, it's all just there, and so we just tapped into it, grabbed, we want to show the image, we want to show the article title, we want to show the date, we could show authors, etc., etc., and we've got a brief introduction as well. So using that, you can browse the site. If you click on one of the items, it pops up with this brief preview, and if you then click again on either the image or the title, it takes you through to the actual article itself. So here's the top of a particular article. Um, for those who aren't familiar with it, this is a, a typical sort of K2 layout for, for an item. You can see various features along the top there that you wouldn't see on usual Joomla content. Uh, the image, as you can see, it's the right width. It's, it's the appropriate width. It's, it's not the largest one. It, it, you can click to see it larger. Um, and so that's the top of an article. And if we then scroll to the bottom, where you can see related items by location. So just from the top there, we've got the article above, and then we've got Matthew Maxwell Scott, a little bio of the author, which is something that I've w often wanted for regular Joomla content. This is, again, built into K2 as standard. And then what we added was the re related items by location. So in this map, again, you can see the particular item that you're looking at, and that's with a, with a green tree, and the gray trees around it are other items. So if you think about this in terms of navigation, someone who uh, is, is interested in their own area, they want to zoom in right on their street and see the news that's going on around them, and they can do that. At the moment, we haven't time limited it, so it has all of the content showing, and as the site grows, we may well decide to limit the, the amount of time, uh, therefore the relevance of the articles. And I'm going to pass back to, uh, to Alex, who's going to talk about another little site. Yeah, I mentioned just briefly, but sorry, do you, do you have a question? Yes. Um, I know of OpenX and I've looked into it. I haven't actually played with either one yet. I'm keen to. Um, it was purely that Google Ad Manager had um, a nice plugin that I wanted to play with for Joomla. So that appealed. And from talking to some other people, 
the people that I know personally and have actually spoken to face to face have got experience with Google Ad Manager. But I know that a lot of people, yeah, say that OpenX is, is the way to go. If, if you've got experience of that, then maybe we can have a chat afterwards. Okay. Right, we mentioned uh, earlier on that uh, we're beginning now to uh, think about uh, installing K2 right at the beginning, even if a client hasn't asked for it, or even if the immediate needs don't suggest that K2 is the way to go. Um, the reasons for that are, it seems to me that if, if a site's content is going to grow to critical mass, K2 is a good decision to make very early. Um, whether, they're, whether it's in their budget or not. Um, the other reason is that, as we found with this instance, third year abroad, to install it later and migrate is a bit of a pain, um, in as much as links can get broken. It's actually a very simple process, but what we have to do with this one is go through around about 250 pages, about three links per page, and make some changes. Uh, we're doing it, it's done, fine, but we wish we'd done it earlier. This is a nice little site uh, that actually also uses geotagging in an interesting way, geotagging both in, in K2 and in uh, Mazette's tree. Um, and those of you that saw our little chat earlier on uh, this weekend on social media will know that this is the site that came to us as a result of uh, the briefest of tweets. Um, I know that Zohar and Tony were there when I was explaining that Jack, one evening, was sitting at his computer, tweet deck, tweet deck merrily chirping away, up comes a tweet from Doug Richards, who is one of the dragons in Dragon's Den. I don't know if you get that in South Africa. It's a big show on the BBC. He's an entrepreneur. He, he's a, an angel, a venture capitalist, call it what you will. And he has a stable of startups. A tweet came up looking for a Joomla uh, rock god, was it his words? Something like that, wasn't it? Joomla rock star developer. Um, Jack was able to respond in 20 seconds to the effect that that was what we did. And two weeks later, we got the largest job of the last quarter of last year. Um, and it's been, an ongoing, uh, it's, going, it's been an ongoing process, and the most recent thing that we've done is to add K2. Uh, I think successfully it's going to work for them very, very well, but we do wish we'd done it much earlier. Is there something you want, more you want to say about that site, Jack? Um, well, as you can see on the left-hand side, we've got the menu there. You can browse countries by language. What we've added more recently is select a country, the, the round button at the top. That links again through to a map. Then the drop down of the actual countries that we have geotagged content for. And we decided that rather than building the, um, the geotagging feature functionality purely into the K2 items, we needed more than that. We needed to be able to geotag more than just the K2 stuff. We've got a, quite a lot of things going on on the website. So we actually built our own separate component. It means that people can tag uh, geotag through K2, but they can also tag purely through this other component. Um, they can then tag the regular Joomla content if there still is any being actually used on the site. They can tag the, their K2 articles in either place. They can also tag the various Mosets tree items within Mosets tree or within this component. And they can tag comments and blog posts and uh, the various people's profiles within the community builder powered uh, side of the site as well. I'm not sure if there's any more to say about that site with regards to K2, I think it is going to be going live on K2 pretty much any minute. Uh, we've got the developers back in London working on that at the moment. Um, and it's been really exciting sort of learning curve for us, as Alex mentioned, playing with K2 and then seeing which sites we could have built better using it and which ones we want to do that with. And uh, yeah, as we said, we, we now started to use it for the majority of the sites that we're building, uh, even the smallest ones. It allows us just so much power, we can turn off a lot of that power if we need to. Um, but, yeah, it's nice to have it there, just in case you need it. Okay, well, that's it, really. That was what we really wanted to do uh, this weekend, was share that experience. I know it's a common experience. People have good experiences with clients and bad ones. Uh, there were times when our experience and our relationship with the journalists, or at least the people in the hub at the top, uh, was stressful. It was never uh, anything less than amicable, but it was certainly, there were moments when we weren't sure how we were going to meet their expectations. And I think as it turns out, and I would say as a direct result of our use of K2, we've managed to exceed their expectations. And the relationship is extremely good. And going forward, there'll, there'll be a lot more work to do uh, for them and with them. Um, so there we are. 3B loves K2. If there are any other questions, anything anybody wants to ask us about that experience, then we're happy to... Uh, Happy to answer them. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the point I take a sip of water. So the, the question there was, uh, what else would we want from K2? Um, <laughs> well, 
what else would we want from K2? What else would we want? Um, I think most of what we needed for this project, most of what we've learned, we've managed to find a way to work with K2. So things like the tagging, the categorization, and everything else, we, allow, we, we found a way to work within those constraints, but also understanding the logic of why, why it's like that. Um, a couple of the things that I was thinking about were, were things like the extending the bios of, of authors, and that would be something I mentioned, but I just saw today that we can do that already. Um, documentation um, that that could be interesting but it's you know it's it's a community so um, there's a, a Joomla documentation team so let's see if, if people want to start contributing for, for k2 documentation we found as I said we, we we probably went about that the long way with regards to just hacking it to pieces seeing what worked how it worked and everything else um, in terms of features and functionality we've um, yeah, we, we're, we're happy with it. We're loving it. Um, I'm excited. I've heard that we can make it work with Tienda, the e-commerce um, solution for Joomla, which I'm excited to play with. Um, I've been told that you can use K2 to browse your catalog of content, your catalog of products, and then at the last moment, you can actually turn that into, into an order using the Tienda e-commerce system. So I'm excited to play with that. Um, I think that a lot of yeah, what, what we might need in the future is, is probably there if we look under the under the hood a little bit or look, reach out to the community. There we go. As, as Fotos says, the, the K2 API is there. So um, yeah, it, it's remarkably easy to uh, to use that to extend it, um, and we've we've done that in a few cases as we've as hopefully we've demonstrated today. So yeah, it's exciting. And ultimately, if if, if you want it to do something else, it, it's fun when you get a client like the ones with conservatives one. We came up with the idea of, of tagging this news in this way, which I haven't, as I said, I haven't seen on another site before. And we, we, we pitched the idea to them, and they just fell in love with it, said, yeah, go for it. And then we obviously had to figure out how on earth to do it. Um, so yeah, a couple of messages to photos on Skype, and, and we were off and, and got that working. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting tool to play with. Phil, do you have a question? Uh, the Maps plugin that you've created, is there any possibility it's going to go on the uh, K2 community? That, that question is one that um, I've actually posed to, to Jordan, our lead developer back in the office, uh, who worked really hard on this, and we definitely want to be able to do that. Um, and what's been great about this weekend is having the chance to meet um, some of the the real people behind the avatars on Twitter or the real people behind the forum um, users and actually have a chat with them about their experiences of launching um, plugins, components, Joomla item, you know, K2 plugins or what have you to the community. So it's, it's been exciting to talk to them and find out the best ways to do it because we definitely want to be able to give back to the community and we want to do it in a way that we're not putting something out that's flawed. Um, we're putting out something that everyone can use um, but also not buying ourselves a, a whole bunch of headache with regards to supporting it ongoing. We'd, we'd like to. It's not, it's not ready just yet. We haven't packaged it up, but if we did that, it would be the first, and I'd, I'd love to be able to give it back to the community. Well, with, that, that with, with that in mind, isn't he? I mean, right from the outset, Jordan's had that in mind to release it back to the community. So everything he's done so far is, is with a view to release it. So the answer's got to be yes. Photos, yeah. As you may know by now, we have like 65 plus extensions uh, working with K2 one way or another. So one of our uh, coming websites uh, within the K2 community is the extensions.getk2.org website. So we will, be, we will provide the means for developers of casual uh, K2 plugins, easy stuff, or more complex to be able to list their extensions and not just that, offer the, uh, the possibility to have a small forum besides uh, below its extension so that you can provide the support and everything in that place. So if it's a casual extension, something small, something simple, but you know, quite useful, uh, you can easily publish it on the JED, publish it on the getk 2org website as well, and offer any support there because Let's not forget this, these, all these are community efforts and the bare min minimum that we have to uh, provide is just a means for people to be able to exchange information between them. 
So instead of losing such an information, such help uh, to the uh, inside the K2 community, uh, we are deciding to you know provide the place for developers to list their extensions and help out their uh, users. Thanks. That that sounds ideal. That sounds. <laughs> Two questions, all right. <laughs> so, first question is uh, regarding the arts desks. Did you see any um, like demand from the journalists for version control? Um, and uh, of course, uh, any potential limitations that you may have seen? I mean, uh, stuff that uh, the journalists required that K2 didn't have. And uh, you know that they they were stuff that probably you know journalists would only ask for. I think the topic of version control may have been mentioned, and the answer was it doesn't exist right now, and you haven't got the budget for it, um, and that pretty much stopped them in their tracks. Uh, if it had that built in, then I expect that may well be used, but th these are people who are generally writing the content on uh, various word processors. And they're using, you know, what they what they know, pages, Word, etc., and then copying through Notepad because we taught them well into K2. So most, I I, th I believe that most of the content they're putting onto the site is is their own. It's not being sub-edited, and it goes on finished. If they need to make an update, they can do. Or perhaps one of the administrators higher than them might make an update. But it it hasn't. It wasn't a big ask. It wasn't an important one or a crucial one. There have been some of the other Joomla, regular Joomla content sites that we've built. Um, there's been more of a requirement for version control, but we haven't actually played with any of the tools for that. Are the journalists using the uh, front end editing part of K2 or just the back end? Uh, the 40 or so journalists, two of them have back end access uh, and manage the modules and, and, and everything else and, and moderate the comments, etc. The All the others purely front-end access. And we do restrict them to their own particular categories for, for editing, you know, so if they're in music or arts or, or you know, they can, they can, we restrict which, which area they can add to. So it's all front-end. What was the second question that you asked a moment ago? Um, features that were asked for that were specific to journalists. Um, there, 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 there weren't, to be honest, questions specific to journalists. There were questions specific to this website that we hadn't been asked before, like the, the, the tagging one, the color coding, and everything else that we've already talked about. Um, they. They were very, very clear on how they wanted the title to appear above the byline, to appear above this, to appear above that. And that was, that was I think, the beginning of our experience of having to hack things to bits, wasn't it? Uh, quite apart, it was simply in presentation. And um, there was a point, I remember, in that process where we had to say, en enough, you know, you're, you're, you're asking for more than these tools really want to readily, readily provide. But they were really clear on that. Well, they, they kept calling the style continental style. They had fallen in love with a number of Russian news websites and how they laid out, which is quite distinct, quite, dis quite different to the UK sites. But that was where, that was, I seem to remember, just the, the endless stream of requests was all about layout. Yeah, I think layout was was a big a big deal, and uh, we dealt with that in the wrong way to start with by hacking it to bits. Of course, now with re with regards to uh, you know the template overrides that we can do for different categories and, and items, the the layout thing isn't an issue with what we've learned now. This was as we said, this is our first K2 site, so you know there was a steep learning curve, but it, it was exciting. Um, yeah, so most of their requests were site-wise rather than anything to do with the workflow. These, these are people who um, have come from writing for newspapers and magazines and this kind of thing, where they may write, and on this site they have the chance to write 20,000 words. That would then be chopped down into 1,000 or 200 words, and that was frustrating for them. So they have workflows imposed upon them by the various companies that they worked for. With this site, they, I think it was a real breath of fresh air that version control or workflow, it was up to them, you know, to work that out. And they, they put the content in the way that they want it to look. So I think it was, yeah, it was a breath of fresh air for them, a, a, a real relief. They had to do with the fact that they were using a new system to publish their content. 
right? They were not used to uh, obviously managing content through a website. So their requests obviously uh, were like, uh, it was like they had some, like the, you know, the print uh, magazine on their minds. That's why they obviously asked for extreme customizations as to how uh, titles and elements looked as it. They had, because they'd come from a print background, uh, they used a completely different set of terminology. And then on top of that, what they didn't know, they made up. And we were having to translate an awful lot of their emails. What on earth do you think they mean by that? Oh, it must mean this. And they'd refer to it every time. They really had made up the language. It wasn't just, how can I describe this thing that I'm talking about? So we had to be very interpretive, didn't we? Um, ma everything we do, any agency knows this, you're, you're managing a client's expectations right from the get-go, but when they're making up their own language, we, didn't even, we weren't even entirely clear what their expectations were, and of course they were shifting anyway. But the fact they came from a print, print background meant that they were really, really good at what they do, they really have the enthusiasm and the ability to just sit and write and write and write, but they didn't know anything. They were starting from ground zero, and I think it was an advantage, personally. I think so as well, and for us it was a re massive relief because the training that we give clients when they're using regular core Joomla content, we're having to teach them about categories and sections and items and title aliases and um, all of this stuff. We love using the JCE editor, so we've got to teach them all of the various tools in that for doing links and images and everything else. What we found, we launched this, our first K2 site, we gave them one training session for a couple of hours, 15 or so people, and that was it. A couple of times we'd spot that they'd copied in from Word or um, you know, perhaps could have aligned something nicer. But essentially, we gave them this one training session. They went off, they made their own video screencasts. They, using Google Docs, the, the various Google Apps tools, they created their own manuals. They didn't ask us for any of that stuff. They just taught themselves. It's like their own little community. And yeah, and th they were off. And that was a huge breath of fresh air for us. That meant um, that it really solidified K2 as a way to go for us for, for content sites, especially where you've got multiple authors who all need to add stuff. We really like the flow, um, the way that you, you, you put your title in, you choose where it's going, you add your tags, you add your content, and you pick an image. Uh, most clients now, we don't even bother teaching them how to drop images in further, further in through the through the article. I, I've got a video guide that I tell them this is where it is, when you need it, go and have a play. Um, so yeah, it's, it's remarkably um, easier, I suppose, for the clients to use the tools. So the, yeah, the, the, the learning curve for them really was quite simple, I think, from what I can understand. And yeah, we, we, we rarely now find any inconsistencies on the site. What would be really great is if you could post an article and it would automatically go to Twitter without having to use RSS feeds or that kind of stuff. It would just automatically be posted from there. The K2 plugin API already supports these events to create any plugin that notifies anything upon the saving or editing of a document. So it's, it's nice, but basically, you know, we have uh, in, man, in mind the concepts of Joomla. You know, Joomla provides 10 stuff, t 10, 10 things, and you can build on those 10 things and make them 1,000. So uh, we try to think about, of a way to cover the bare minimum for such multi-author environments, and then add the tools, meaning the K2 plugin API, to be able to extend these forms in the front end and the back end and do all sorts of stuff. And one of one of those stuff that can be obviously achieved is what you asked. I, if I can just add to that, um, the you guys have used K two, right? Yeah. So you know that yeah, every category and tag and everything else is like so many RSS feeds in there. You've got to turn them off if you don't want them all. So what we would tend to do, I think, more powerful than having it in the actual system firing out to Twitter or whatever through whatever kind of plugin you want to build, I prefer to do it through RSS feed and pump the various RSS feeds for the different tags, for example, into twitterfeed.com, and then from there you can fire it out onto Facebook or onto Twitter, and because you can then add in your own um, prefix and suffix, you can then say, here's the latest stuff in comedy, or here's the latest stuff in theatre. In goes the title, in goes a shortened link with appropriate Google tracking codes and, and everything else, so you can see the stats, and then maybe a hashtag on the end. 
Whereas if you were doing it using a, a plugin, for example, that you're going to build using the, the K2 API, I think that would be a lot of code to, uh, to have to build. So um, we know the guys at Twitter feed, Mario, and uh, yeah, we really like the tool there. So personally, I find that the power that gives is a good way to go. Any other questions or comments, tips? You guys are using K2 as well. If anyone wants to add anything? Well, you know what's coming in 2.4, right? Tell me. Version control. Uh, Did we hear that here first, or have you been telling people all weekend? Uh, sorry? Did we hear that here first now, or have you been telling people all well, weekend? On camera, yes. <laughs> 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 That's the first one. Breaking uh, news. So we got version control. Uh, we figured out a, an easy way for people to be able to compare documents uh, without too much hassle. They don't have to be programmers or anything to you know, just, comp uh, just uh, uh, compare uh, documents. And it's, uh, it's really easy to, to apply. And uh, there are more features coming in that basically improve the, the workflow. Uh, we will be having uh, new uh, media managers uh, that you can use to select your image, your video, your attachment, and, uh, or any other file type. And this, this will be part of the K2 plugin API. So you'll be able to write a plugin and call this manager to open, open the server so that you can look for files of specific type or whatever. Um, and of course, um, like I said, improvements. What else? Um, we'd, like to see, we'd definitely like to see your uh, maps a plugin on, uh, you know, listed. It would definitely he uh, help a lot of people. And uh, performance, performance, performance. I can hear a shout over there for language. For language. Uh, you're not We're putting us any ideas about a new CMS, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're actually working with the Joomfish team so that uh, uh, Joomfish, you know, supports K2 and the other uh, CCK components uh, in a specific way so that, uh, yes, one of the things that will be possible in the coming versions of Joomfish and K2 will be to have something like a drop-down list within K2 and be able to switch languages. So, and, and not just leave, you know, not leave K2 for another component where you can edit your content. Of course, that will require the cooperation of us, Joomfish and uh, Joomla, of course, because uh, you know it will depend on how much Joomla is being uh, is being progressing. Uh, Phil's got another question. Uh, the last question, because I know you've got to get a flight, is uh, 3B Web, and I mean this is more sort of directed at Alex. Um, is do you get involved? <laughs> do you get involved in jugs? <laughs> nice timing. Uh, yes, we're planning on starting a couple of large jugs in uh, England in the very near future. I hope, I hope they will all attend. I have no idea why this guy's laughing. <laughs> Thank you, Phil, very much for that question. Yes, I hope you'll be attending my large jugs in the near future. Uh, and you, Tony, as well. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. This has been a really nice opportunity for us to be able to just show a little uh, client experience. Um, I know that the experiences uh, across all the agencies are largely similar. What we're discovering more and more is uh, whether you're a one-man band or whether you're a, a small, medium-sized uh, agency or whether you're one of the big, big, big agencies, uh, experiences with the clients are common. And uh, it's just nice to kind of receive that affirmation, I think, to hear that another agency has had similar experiences to us. We've been getting that all weekend, and we're finding it very uh, affirming and, uh, and fun to hear. And I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about our experiences with, uh, with the Arts Desk. Thank you very much. <laughs>